Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. And today we want to have a look at two distros running the Cinnamon desktop environment. And I was asked to look at Fedora Cinnamon versus Ubuntu Cinnamon. So Ubuntu Cinnamon, some of you may not know about it, is a new uh, remix. And uh, they're I think they're trying to become, uh, trying to put their ducks in a row to become an official flavor eventually. That's my understanding. Um, but uh, they're off to a great start. We'll have a look at what they're doing. And uh, I'm going to comment on the theming a little bit. However, uh, as I'm recording this live, uh, the developer for this in here, and they said they are actually going to be changing some of the theming stuff uh, down the road. So that's something to keep in mind when we get to the theming and uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to see what it looks like. Now, before we dive on, on over to the distros themselves. We like having a brief look at their website. Fedora, this is one of the ones that is really committed to pretty much open source, uh, the pure FOSS philosophy. They don't like putting anything in there that's not a uh, not a, a free and open source piece of software. What this is going to mean is that if you're on the pure FOSS philosophy, Fedora is probably going to be your better bet of these two distributions for the purposes of, of what you're doing. But if you want things to be working much better out of the box, then what we will find is that the Ubuntu flavors are generally going to be a little bit more user friendly. That being said, with Fedora, you can grab the basic workstation here. So they have the workstation and the server. You can grab the workstation. This is going to be a live image that's going to install, I believe, uh, the GNOME desktop. But you can actually go over to the downloads page. And if you want, uh, if you want to get something else, you can go ahead and find a variety of different alternatives. Network installers, torrent uh, downloads, alternative, um, uh, the alternative architectures, cloud-based images. The everything is the one that I'm using now. This is the one that used to be the net installer. And if you're familiar with Debian net installer, the everything is basically the net installer. 600 megabyte download, you choose your desktop environment and the various packages of software on your installation. That's really where Fedora is going to be better in these respects with regards to the install because you can grab a variety of different custom installers. You can go ahead and install the system exactly what you want. So if I'm printing this guy up and I, just, I don't need a print server at all, SSH at all, all that kind of stuff, I just leave it out. If I want those features, I go ahead and, and add them in. I can build a, a headless system that's just meant to SSH into or I can put on my choice of pretty much any desktop environment that has ever existed in the world of Linux. So Fedora has the customizability options, albeit it is going to be a little bit less user friendly. If you're wanting to go with something like uh, just you, you're committed to Cinnamon and you want something that's going to work better out of the box, the Ubuntu Cinnamon is probably going to work a little bit better because of uh, being based on Ubuntu. They have the proprietary blobs that are going to work with a little bit more hardware and you're going to fight it a whole lot less. The installation process is a lot simpler because with this, you download the, um, the installer. You're just going to go ahead and install this guy, and you're going to end with exactly what you intended to get, which is an Ubuntu system with the Cinnamon desktop environment. The downsides, of course, is this guy is going to be, because it's based on Ubuntu, it is snap heavy on the front end, and um, there is some of the potential controversy with that if that's something that, that you care about. Otherwise, though, both of these are going to be pretty much the same as far as how the functionality is because, hey, we're both running on this Cinnamon desktop. Now, the Cinnamon desktop is my personal favorite. If you are unfamiliar with it, I have a whole video about running the Cinnamon desktop and uh, just about some of the history and how to set it up and how to configure it and how to work with it. The reason I like it is I have, since I've been using Linux, I've explored and experimented with all the different desktop environments. And for me, for my actual production work, I am most productive in a Windows type environment. We have a panel on the bottom. I can see a list of all my open applications. I can see a menu that pops up on the left side of the screen. I can use a combination of keyboard and mouse to get to those locations. That is really the type of stuff that I'm really uh, really interested in the most. And so with that, the Cinnamon desktop follows that general theme. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on over to the desktop and have a look at what we got. So over here with Vidora, we're going to go ahead and um, log on in here. All right, so here we are on the desktop. 
Now we are getting this check your video drivers because we are running this in a virtual machine. So this is how we get it right installed. Uh, as far as the setup, they're actually using the, uh, the blue Linux Mint theme. So this is themed up exactly like Linux Mint is going to be. Now they have actually gone with a little bit smaller panel down here instead of the, the large bulkier panel that Linux Mint is now shipping with by default. It is the same panel, it's set up the same way. And I think it's, uh, I think we're running, definitely running something in the four range. We'll go ahead and check the exact version of Cinnamon here in a moment. But uh, they have actually made the panel a little bit smaller, just make it a little bit nicer to work with. Here that we have our Fedora logo over there and uh, you can kind of see what, um, what this looks like. So let's go ahead and have a look at our system information, just have a brief look at what we're looking at here. So we have six gigs of RAM, we have Cinnamon version is 4.6.7. So very stinking new, brand new version of Cinnamon. Theming out of the box, it looks amazing because it's using Linux Mint's theming. Now, where you are gonna have some issues on Fedora is you're going to have a harder time getting some multimedia to work. We're gonna have to go into the terminal and add uh, is it RPM? I always get this mixed up. RPM fusion into the uh, into the terminal to get some uh, pr uh, some proprietary packages installed. That's what you're going to need to get your multimedia codecs all set up, other than the free and open source ones. And so there are actually indeed a few downsides to running Fedora. But if you are committed to that pure FOSS philosophy, that is what you're going to. Uh, you're going to want to use that. Now, as far as installing applications, uh, other than going into the terminal and using DNF, which is fine, we do have the DNS Dragora software management, and I think that this utility needs to be burnt with fire. It's horrible. On top of it being extraordinarily slow, bulky, hard to work with, it basically gives you a harder to use Synaptic Package Manager. So here, uh, it did, did take a little bit to get there, and now we're going to get in here. You can open up your various packages. Let me expand this guy out a little bit bigger. So here's audio production. You can kind of see that it is from here going to work a lot like um, Synaptic. You have to kind of know what you're looking for. You can actually do uh, searches for things. So if I wanted to find maybe a web browser, let's just see if I can happen to find a web browser or something here. So under here, bare bones browser, here's Geary plugins. So there's a lot of plugins. There's a Tor browser launcher. So if I were to go through this, there's probably gonna find some extra browsers, but you can kind of see it's a little bit harder to work with. Let's go applications and graphical internet. This is really where you're gonna find your most of your web browsers. So it's definitely a usable thing. It's just not quite as easy to work with. Uh, and as far as other services like this, I find this one to be very slow, very clunky, difficult to work with, particularly on the very first load. So that is pretty much what we have. Now it does have, uh, you can see the updater is already running on system start. So we are gonna get notifications of any updates. There are not any updates available for it right now. All of the theming out of the box. I, I just like the, the small size, how condensed it is. The overall theming works great. We're not gonna spend any time really diving into cinnamon and what cinnamon does. But one of the things that we'll notice down here is we do not have any specific driver utilities for proprietary drivers because it's Fedora. They don't generally do that. We should find a tool that will do that, though, in the Ubuntu version. So let's go ahead and close this down. We'll have a look at the Ubuntu Cinnamon next. All right, so here we are on our uh, Ubuntu Cinnamon Login. Login screen's pretty much going to be about the same. Let's enter our super secret passwords. Definitely not one, two, three. And we'll go ahead and get logged in here. All right, and here we are landing on the desktop. So you can see that this guy here, it's uh, definitely much more orange. You can see that they're using their more standard default 
uh, larger version of the taskbar. This is easy to change. It's the panel, really. It's easy to change. You can just change the size of it. I'm not a huge fan of how they do the date like this with the whole day, the whole everything. It just takes up a whole ton of room down here on the bottom. But of course, in this modern view that utilizes uh, this format of, uh, of icons, nothing ever goes across the middle anyway. I uh, guess what's the use of doing more space. Uh, you can see though, looking at it, it is, I, I find it to be a little bit hard to look at because while I do actually like the orange and black, it's the colors I use for my business. I actually, in fact, have a cinnamon theme that is orange and black. You should have a look at that. But uh, this one here, I actually find a little bit I find it a little bit hard to look at for some reason. I'm not really sure why. That's all theming stuff that's easy to change in your systems. Uh, apparently, we have um, a problem. Let's just go ahead and report the problem. Why not? All right. So there's that. There's that. Uh, as far as, let's have a look at which versions of everything we're running. System information. So we are running Cinnamon version. 4.4.8. So this is quite a bit older version of Cinnamon. We remember we had uh, 4.7 point something on Fedora. So if you do need a newer version of Cinnamon for whatever reason, the Fedora is going to be a little bit better, a little bit newer. Uh, but uh, this one here will work, 448. Not a whole whole ton has changed in the meantime. So with this one here, you are going to have, uh, it is Ubuntu under the hood, so it's going to have some of the Ubuntu system tools. Um, is the driver utility not installed on this? Or maybe it's uh, installed there somewhere else. Additional drivers. There you go. It's uh, it's listed somewhere. So it's, there's actually a, an Ubuntu settings panel as well. So it's under the Ubuntu settings panel. So this is the one where um, Ubuntu distributions are going to have this where you can actually uh, install any proprietary driver. So if you're needing proprietary systems to work, uh, maybe if you're doing a lot of multimedia and you want to make sure you can fully support your MP3s and your W, uh, was that, um, uh, MOVs, just any of the different multimedia files and formats, then what you'll find actually is that um, Ubuntu is probably going to work a little bit better for you in that respect. At least you're going to have to fight with it quite a bit less. All right. So uh, with that, though, most of the other things are going to be fairly similar. But since this happens to be based on Ubuntu, they are kind of doing some snap approaches. Now, by default, there are no snaps installed. So SnapD is set up, but you can see there's no snaps installed. But if we actually go and search for some software to install, we are using the GNOME software store, not the Snap software store. But it still does give you a lot of your snaps as kind of the first priority. So you can see here, just Google Play Music, snap, 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 snap. We have a variety of those. And if we go to, let's always do a search for Caden Live because Caden Live has the snap and the repository versions. So the update that I ran yesterday does fix the icons. Um, you have to click on one of these to tell which one's which. So you can see that this one here is the one from the Ubuntu repositories. This one here is going to be the one from the snaps. So Snapcraft here. Of course, on the snap ones, you can pull down and choose whether you want to go latest stable, latest candidate, latest beta, or latest edge. So you have that as a various uh, options. So out of the box, they are not pushing the snaps on you. It is set up and ready to go. The software store is going to find snaps and non-snaps. So if you are concerned about running snaps, um, it's actually going to be fairly easy to get rid of those. You're just going to want to remove the um, remove SnapD and remove the SnapD GNOME software plugin. So that's really what's going to get you get you to the point where you're not going to be seeing the snaps inside of there. But as far as I'm, I'm concerned, it doesn't bother me that it's in there. It's an Ubuntu distribution. We would expect that the snaps are going to be there. And that's kind of kind of what we're seeing. So really, ultimately, that's a lot of the differences. The theming, which is very easy to change in the system settings. And under the hood, this one's running apt versus Fedora's DNF. Ubuntu is going to be a lot more user-friendly for 
any proprietary tools, drivers, or media formats or things like that. Ubuntu is going to work a little bit better out of the box. Fedora is going to give you more customizability. So that's kind of what we see there. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is which one of these is better? Again, like many other distributions, I'm not going to sit here and say this one's definitely better than that one under every circumstance. Simply because... It, each one of these is going to be good for its own user use case. If you are new to Linux and you're not necessarily the most computer savvy guy and you're looking at doing one of these, I would steer you definitely more towards the Ubuntu Cinnamon. It's, there's fewer options. It's easier to install. Out of the box, the thing's going to look nice. I am getting a couple of system errors and things like that. Hopefully those will get, uh, those will get fixed and ironed out. Uh, as they work on this distribution, but nothing there is going to crash the system. Oftentimes those show up and you're not even really sure what happened. Something recovered without you even being aware of it. Now, if you're more of a computer expert or the pure FOSS philosophy is exactly what you want to go with, you are going to want to stick with the Fedora version instead. And pretty much all the things that Ubuntu gives you the ability to do out of the box with user friendliness, you can do in Fedora. It just takes a few extra steps, some extra research, and definitely going into the terminal the installing software, way better on Ubuntu than it is on Fedora in this case. But as far as everything else is concerned, they're pretty standard distributions. Which one would I use personally? Eh, I don't know. I like my Linux Mint, which is where Cinnamon desktop environment came from. So that's kind of still where I'm going to steer you towards. And uh, I actually do have a copy of my orange view on that video. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that video uh, in the description. So if you want to see what I did with orange and black beings, that that's one of my business colors. So you can have a look at that. So thanks for coming along guys. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen. Now you can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T O M M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.